Hello guys, how are you doing? Uh, I'm here again. I'm going to solve the same problem that I solved before, but now I'm going to solve the problem by using a, an alternative approach. Let's say if we call the other one the method of the joints, just for the sake of keeping the same uh, the same wording, let's call this the method of the sections, which is not necessarily how it's called but the other one wasn't called the method of the joints either way so anyway this is the method of the sections for cables okay and I'm gonna put here just that in case uh, okay this is the same thing instead of going joint by joint and doing particle equilibrium I'm gonna do rigid which is not rigid also but I'm gonna do rigid body equilibrium of these things here so as you can see one of the important things is that uh, I know this is a pin I know this is a cable but the cable is gonna come in this direction like that and the pin is gonna have two reactions AX and AY but if we combine these two reactions, what we're gonna get is the same tension here. Um, the same thing is gonna happen here. You're gonna have these two reactions, EX and EY, here. And if you combine them, that reaction E is gonna be the same tension that is acting here. So let's take advantage of that. And let's take advantage of that by solving this problem. The first thing that you have to realize is that I could, for example, what if I decided to make a section here? Like the same way that we did work the method of the section. So I decided to make a section there and I'm going to do this. Something like that. And then I'm going to say, oh, look at that. I'm going to do moment with respect to that point, but only for this part. So if I do that, like that, and I do moment at that point, that point is called B, I'm going to do summation of moments, summation of moments of B, like that, using this side of the, of the uh, beam, so the cable, what is going to happen is this, I'm going to have AX, first this force is not producing any moment because I'm on top of the point, so it's going to be AX multiplied by this distance, 1.5. Remember it's from the point B, from here. So AX times 1.5 positive, and this AY is going to be negative, multiplied by this distance, which is 2. 2 equals 0. And then I can solve, and I can say, oh, a AY, if I solve for AY, it's going to be 0 0.75 AX because I can solve for any and pass this to the other side and this is going to be 0 0.75x now I'm going to do the same thing but instead of applying the moment at B I'm applying the moment at C moment at C and this part also of the structure so if I do that and I say summation of moments at C equals 0 using also this side of the structure what is happening is this. Let's start with AX. So it's going to be AX multiplied by the distance from here to C, 2.5. And that's going to be positive. Now I have AY multiplied by this distance, which is 6. Negative. Negative. And then I have this 5 here, plus the force is 5 multiply by this distance which is 4 equals 0 now can you do whatever you want to do I can plug this into here and you can say AX multiply by 2.5 minus AY but AY is this 0 0.5 0 0.75 AX multiply by 6 remember this is this plus 20 equals 0 and then I can solve for AY, this is going to be 2.5 and this is going to be 4.5, 4.5, so I can solve for X, 2.5 minus 4.5 is 2, 20 divided by 2 is 10. And I calculated AX. 
I can plug this into here and I can get Ay equals 7.5 kilonewton and if I combine these two as I said before I could say that A reaction at A which is going to be the same TAB is going to be a square root of square root of uh, 10 square plus 7.5 square and that's going to be TAB and it's going to be 12.5 kilonewton okay good now what else I need to calculate this one I need to calculate this one so how can I do that without just going back to the method of the joints well we do that by going to the external reactions and if I go to the external reactions I can calculate how much is I could go either to this side and do the same thing do moment here but I knowing these values I could do that or uh, I just can go to D and go to this other side it's longer it's up to you you know what I'm saying what I'm saying is this you already know this right so AY you can say AY plus EY minus 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 but you don't know these ones and that's going to be a big 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 problem so instead of doing that let's do the same thing here let's do summation of moments at D equals zero I'm going to use this part this side equals zero remember over it here and do moment from here to that part that's what we are doing from here to that part so if I do moment there at D what do we get from there? We get AX, which I know, multiplied by the distance from here to here is 2.5. Positive. Now, negative AY multiplied by the distance from here to here, that's 11. Now, this 5 from here, positive plus. 9 times 5 and this force P1 plus P1 times this distance which is 5 equals 0 and I know a AX AX is 10 right 10 and AY is 7.5 so if I put this in here I can solve for P1 and P1 will be 2.5 kilonewton. Now for getting P2, the same thing. Now I can do moment either from E to this side or from A to that side, but it's better eliminate this because I still don't know those values. So I can do summation of moments at E equals zero. And then I start again and I say AX, AX multiplied by this distance from here to here horizontal if this is horizontal AX the distance between E and A in the vertical direction is zero so AX is not producing any moment this time when it passes through there then I have AY negative 7.5 that's the value of AY put here AY multiply by this distance uh, 5 9 13 15 15 Then I have positive 5 multiplied by 13. Positive P1, but we calculated P1, is this one, multiplied by 9. Plus P2 multiplied by 4 equals 0. Remember, I'm doing moment here. So AX passes through the point and also AX, AEX and EY. And then from here we can solve for P2, which is 6.25 kilonewton. Now, the tricky part here, which is not tricky, because it's something that you should know anyhow from the theory, is that the problem is asking what is the uh, maximum tension. I know this is the maximum angle. First you can see it from the drawing, but don't just base your 
uh, assumption into that because this may be just written out of a scale and then you don't some professors do that just to see how how well you're thinking but you can calculate this angle release you can calculate this angle release and you can calculate this angle release and then you're going to find out that the maximum angle the maximum angle happens with TAB TAB uh, forms the maximum angle with the horizontal horizontal meaning the maximum tension is going to be TAB and this is another way that you can solve this it's another method is shorter if you will both of them are easy you do your pick and sometimes you have to combine these two methods I'm going to keep solving problems like this and then you're going to see what happens uh, some of them you have to combine and, and go from joints to uh, sections and back and forth see you in the next video guys keep watching please